Variances in financial reporting are important, and even more so in the current uncertain economic times. In this video, I want to show you six advanced charts created in Excel that you can use to report variance between actual results and budget forecast or last year. I also want to highlight some of the expert level techniques used to create the charts in Excel. Now, all of the charts you're going to see are created in the current version of Excel in Office 365. And most of the techniques used have been available in Excel for many years now. So let's look at the first visual. This is a bar chart that compares the actual expenses in each area to the budgeted amount for that area. The bar represents the actual value and the line is the budgeted value. With this type of visual, it is easy to see whether the actual amount is above or below the budgeted amount. I've also added a label to indicate whether the actual is under or over the budgeted amount. Now, I want to point out a couple of techniques used to create this chart. First, you will notice that I've replaced the legend with colored text in the title of the chart. Legends take up room in the chart area and are not as effective when the viewer has to go back and forth between the legend and the chart to understand what they're looking at. Second, I used a layering technique to create the lines for the budgeted amount. In the list of data series on the chart format ribbon, we'll go into the list of series. What you'll notice in the list of series is, is we have the budgeted series, but then we have a cover series. I'm going to select the cover series. I'm going to change it to a gold color here so you can see it. Now, what you'll notice is that it is almost as long as the budgeted amount, but not as quite as much. So I'm going to press Control-1 and I'm going to open up the formatting pane. And I want to show you the series overlap here is 100%. So all of the bars are on top of each other. So the line for the budget is created by placing a bar with the same color as the chart background on top of the slightly longer bar that represents the budgeted amount. And when the bars are fully overlapping as they are here, only the end of that budget bar remains and it appears as if it is a line. So when I turn the fill color back to the same as the background, which is white, it covers up everything except the very end of the budget bar, making the budget bar look like a line. Now you do have to make sure that the different data series are layered in the correct order for this to work. Our second visual is a variation on the first visual. In this visual we are comparing the actual expenses to both budget and last year. The bars represent the actual values, the orange bars, with the blue lines and labels being the budgeted amounts and the green lines and labels being the values from last year. Now similar to the previous visual, the lines are created by using a layering of bars that uses a bar with the same color as the chart background to cover up all but the end of the bar for the amount you want, creating a line as the comparison. So when we look again at the list of data series here, what you'll notice is because we needed two lines, we have two cover data series because there are those two lines. Another te technique that I wanted to show in this visual, which was also used in the previous visual as well, is how the amount bars, the orange bars in this particular visual, are created as half the height of the normal bar in a bar chart. So let me again select our amount from our list of data series here. You see they're selected. I'm going to open the formatting pane by pressing Control-1 and go to the uh, fill color. And what you'll notice here, the fill color is a gradient fill. It is a linear fill. And when we look at the gradient stops, if I put my cursor over here, you'll see that the different stops define the gradient that's being applied. So some of the stops here are set to be 100% transparent and other stops are 0% transparent. So only the portions that are set to 0% transparent actually appear in the chart. So by setting the position of the gradient stops, we can have just the top half, bottom half, or middle half of the bar showing. Another technique to notice in this visual 
is that I've created more space between the sets of bars. And the way I did that, I'll go up to the data table here, is I have included blank rows in the chart data table. Because there are labels above and below each bar in the chart, these extra rows give us more space so that the labels don't run into each other. So the third visual that I want to show you uh, kind of can be thought of as, as the first visual rotated 90 degrees. Now similar to the first visual, we have lines representing the forecast and columns representing the actual unit sales. And this makes it easier for the viewer to see how each region did compared to the forecast. The added text indicates the percentage above or below forecast for each region. Now while this visual might look like a variation of the first visual, it's actually created very differently, which is actually the first technique that I wanted to share with you. Excel allows you to use a combination of two charts together. So two different chart types on the same chart and that allows us to create this visual. So when I select the chart and on the chart design ribbon I open up chart type you'll notice it says custom combination type and the combo is the list on the left here. So you'll notice that we have a combination where the actual series is a column chart and the forecast is a line chart. Now not all chart combinations make sense, but knowing about this technique can certainly open up opportunities to create more advanced charts. The second technique that I wanted to point out in this chart is the use of custom number formatting to create the labels that indicate the difference between the actual and forecast values. Let me scroll up and if we look at this cell here, F28, we can see that it uses the text function to create part of the text label or all of the text label in this particular example. Now one of the options in the text function here is to use custom number formatting. So what I did in the custom number formatting area here is I used this to add a plus or minus sign in front of the number depending on whether the actual sales were above or below the forecast. So when you create custom data labels like this, what it does is it gives you so much more flexibility because you can then assign them to a data series. And in fact, it allows you, if you want, to include words in those labels. And that's actually something you saw in the first example in the video. Our fourth visual extends this chart. So when you need to compare the actual values to both the forecast and the same time period last year, you can use this type of visual where there are columns for the actual values, the gray, and dotted lines, the blue and the green, for each of the forecast, and in this example, the same quarter last year. And as we saw in the previous example, if we go up to the data table, we will see that there are blank rows used in that data table to separate the different regions. Now one technique that I showed in the previous visual that I wanted to point out here as well is the use of a fill color in the data labels for the columns. Now in some cases the data label is wider than the column. Now that can lead to it being really hard to read the numbers since there may be two different colors behind the numbers. One of them is the fill color for the column and then you have the chart background usually white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the data labels. I'm going to press control one to open up the formatting pane. And what I want to notice here on the fill in line section is the fill color for the data labels. The default is to have no fill, but what I've done is I've added the solid fill and I've used a color that's similar to the fill color of the column, not quite so dark, uh, so that the text is a little easier to read. But by adding that fill color, it keeps the contrast between the text of the data label and the background wherever the data label sits it's similar enough to make that data label really easy to read. Our fifth visual is a variation on using a column chart. There are situations when only variants of one type are an issue, such as when executives are not concerned with underspending in a department, only overspending. So what this visual does is it uses columns for the actual amount spent, the orange, and markers in the blue 
to indicate the budget amount. What this visual does is it adds text to indicate which departments overspent in red. The way the chart is defined, as the values change, the overspending text also changes and appears only for those departments that spent more than the budget. Now the first technique I want to highlight here is the use of markers on an invisible line for the budget values. This technique is a little different from the technique in an earlier visual. Now it's still a combination chart, so if I look at the chart type here, it's still a combination. So we do have a column. The budget line here, you'll see it's line with markers, not just line. So it is a combination chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that budget series and what you'll notice is it looks like it has selected just the dashes. So I'm going to open up the formatting pane by pressing Control 1 and when I go to our fill in line one of the things you notice on the line is there's no line meaning this line is invisible but by placing the line in those particular spots it allows us to look at the marker and so in the marker here we have set the marker to when we look at the marker options one of the built-in the dash and I've made it very large 18 this is much larger than the default which is usually around 5 or 6 and then I've set the fill color to be solid and no border and this is what creates the markers in their particular correct positions, but you don't see the line that connects those markers because the line color was set to be no line as an invisible. So it's one of the ways that you can position items using an invisible line so that you see the markers, but you don't see the line. The second technique in this visual that I wanted to point out is the formula that only creates a label for overspending when the actual value is greater than the budget value. So we scroll up when we look at cell E22 here. What we notice is that we test does the uh, actual exceed the budget and if it does then we set up uh, a calculation of the percentage and format it as a percentage. And the last part is what I wanted to really focus on here is if it is not overspending, so if it's exactly the same or underspending, it enters a null value. So the null value is created by putting uh, no space between the double quote marks to create a null. So the null doesn't really appear as anything in the chart. So when these data labels get added, there's nothing there if the actual value is below the budget value. So it gives us a lot more flexibility because these red uh, data labels that indicate overspending only show up if and only if there is overspending in that particular department. So as the data changes, it, the chart automatically updates and this gives us a lot more flexibility in using the chart in the future. The final visual focuses on just the variance itself. Sometimes it's not the actual and budget forecast or previous time period values that matter as much as the difference between the two values. Now this visual shows the absolute and relative variances. Often both perspectives are required so that a value can be put in perspective. A seemingly large value may not be very big on a percentage basis and vice versa. The techniques I want to highlight in this visual are ones that haven't been used in the previous visuals. The first technique is the use of scaling to allow us to create a single chart that contains values that are not measured in the same units, dollars and percentage. If we created this chart as two charts and attempted to line them up, it would be very difficult, almost impossible. By creating a single chart, the bars for each asset group are always properly aligned. The challenge is that one set of bars is measured in dollars and the other in percentages. So when we look at the calculation up at the top here, what we do is we scale those percentage bars. And we're using scaling factors so that the percentage gets scaled up to a value that is going to be visible 
on a chart with a much larger dollar value. And what we do is we use custom data labels here in this column to create data labels that can be applied to those scaled segments so that we have the correct label even though the scaled value is much larger. So the second technique is the use of invisible segments. So invisible segments position visible segments. The chart is a stacked bar chart. And you'll notice here are the different segments. You'll notice some of the segments are called spacer segments. Those are invisible segments. So if I select one of them by selecting the chart and going to the format ribbon in the list, if I select spacer one, you'll then see where it is in the chart. When you look at it in the chart, you see it because I've now selected it, but it doesn't show up. Why doesn't it show up? Well, let me press Control-1 to open the formatting pane. And on our fill and line, this is why. Because the fill is set to no fill, and the automatic border is none. So it is a segment, but you do not see it because it has no fill color. And we use these invisible segments to position the visible segments for the dollars and percentages. And I refer to these usually as spacer segments because they space out the other segments that are visible. Stacked bar and stacked column charts with invisible segments can be used to create other advanced charts as well. In an increasingly challenging financial environment, reporting variances will be even more important. The six visuals I showed in this video and the techniques used to create them will help you create Excel charts to communicate variances in your organization. If you want to get templates to create the six visuals you saw and detailed training on all of the techniques you can use to create these and other similar visuals, check out my Financial Viz Excel Techniques online course called Reporting Variants in Financial Results with Advanced Excel Charts. The link is on the screen and in the description below. The course includes the full templates in Excel and hours of detailed step-by-step -step training on how to use the templates and techniques in Excel. Check out all the details at the link on the screen or in the description below.